Atlas Toolworks has powered through a pandemic, supply chain disruptions, rising inflation, and now wartime scarcity. With the Russian invasion of Ukraine, we've seen increases to fuel and energy costs immediately and increase to raw materials. That goes especially for nickel, used to make stainless steel, much of it mined in Russia. It's used for everything from shovels to fighter jet parts made by Atlas, and so precious every scrap is saved and resold. There was an item we looked at last week for, for one sheet was around $900, and the next day it was $1,200. The unreliable supply chain leaves companies like Atlas stockpiling supplies and passing the higher costs on to customers. The supply chain problems affect timing, price, and availability of goods to market. And if either the war in Ukraine or the pandemic grow worse, so do those problems. At Uptown Bikes in Chicago, parts have been scarce and costlier, forcing the staff to get creative. We normally would have new bikes to sell, but we've really pivoted to focus on fixing up any used bikes we might have available. We've had to be a lot more broad-minded about what used parts that we save off bikes that we might not have saved parts on before. Two years of pandemic supply chain woes on everything from bikes to iPhones have only been exacerbated by the war in Ukraine. The iPhone, for example, is assembled in China, but all the parts are made all over the world. So there may be a chip or something within that phone that was uh, manufactured in uh, the Ukraine or Russia uh, that is now ultimately having to be sourced from a different supplier. For the head of Atlas, the answer is clear. The U.S. needs to source more raw materials at home. The United States is the cleanest, best place to mine things, you know, or get oil. I don't think, you know, Mother Nature cares if the oil came out of Russia or the United States. He's hoping the ripple effect from the pandemic and from the war in Ukraine will spark new innovation in the U.S. and around the globe. John Hendren, Al Jazeera, Chicago.